Hey guys, so today we're gonna take a look inside Laurentine's homeschool. Laurentine grew up in Vanuatu and she had a fantastic experience at such a young age, uh, interacting with the new Vanuatu people, also being out in nature, nature-based play and imaginative play. And so she really wanted to help create that for Hugo. So we've got a homeschool running here and uh, there's some expat kids and we've also opened our doors to the kids in the local village as well because many of them often just spend their days at home and don't go to school. So we're helping teach them English and some basic skills. So let's go have a look. Name blue animal? Wolf. Italian wolf. Wolf. Okay, and then also it, it, it hunts. It hunts. What type of animal? Is it a herbivore? Or carnivore. 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 What does carnivores do? They eat meat. Yeah. Hi Laurentine. Hello. I'm really excited to speak with you about uh, your homeschool adventures. Yeah, thanks. Um, why was it that you chose homeschooling for Hugo and to set up a homeschool here in Vanuatu? Well, for me, homeschooling is a classroom without walls, really. And I think I've really observed kids and I've looked at the first seven years of their lives and I feel that they're sponges. They take in their environment, they want to learn so much and they really remember so much. So I thought, what better way to let Hugo experience all the things we experience on a day-to-day -day basis and let him learn from, I guess, our life the mistakes we make, our challenges, but also the amazing things we get to experience. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see you. On Monday and Thursday, we have a so-called homeschool day. So we get to catch up with a lot of our friends that are also homeschooling mums and dads. Um, and they allow their kids to come over and play at the house and we have a, a teacher slash nanny who comes and plays with them as well as look, looks after them. And we do everything from learning how to read and write to arts, craft, pottery, any type of outdoor activities. Maya, can you write a word with M? Beautiful. Quick, pop it on. Alexa. We walk around in the garden a lot, collect nature art, um, put it together, and you know, there's beautiful things you can do. And it's just about getting kids to learn from nature. And it's funny, but you see kids that are very ingrained in the system and they don't really know what to do with nature because they might get quite bored. But if you're from an early age already looking at nature, appreciating it, looking at the, the forms and the patterns and the art, I guess, of it, you, um, you get to do so much more outdoors so, um, so that you never get to be bored as a kid. Yeah. I love Vanuatu for its happiness. The people, the second you arrive from the airport, there's always beautiful big smiles welcoming you. The people do really tend to have this sense of, I'm happy just to be alive. And you do, when you get to Vanuatu, you sort of start realizing that you get into that chilled out groove as well. Like you start being more grateful for your life and it just rubs off from the people. What's also different from Australia is that I feel um, as a mom in Australia you feel like you constantly have to bring your kids to soccer practice or to friends houses and to school back and forth making lunches. There's a lot of preparing and organizing your children's schedule um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas here I feel like when Rangi comes home from school and when he goes hanging out here I just know that nature will provide so much entertainment. They'll go surfing. 
They'll go play with friends around the corner. They'll go and jump on the trampoline. They'll go and do some art, make something. And that stress of, oh God, they're sitting in front of their iPads or they're sitting in front of the TV all day. I need to find something for them to do is no longer really there. It's my turn to go. You no, know it's my turn. No, I didn't do it properly. So you can get it up the next turn to No. Just wait. You go, go. <laughs> so Vanuatu is not very strange for me because I grew up here. I was Hugo's age when we first moved here. Um, from the age of three till about nine, I lived here before. Uh, most people are getting posted out here to work in an aid organization. You have the Save the Children Foundation, you have UNICEF. Um, a lot of aid organizations allow their expat to, to live here and their kids to go to school here for a two or three year posting. Um, and then there's also volunteer work here. There's so much beautiful people coming over from all over the world with a spirit to give. They get put up here and they can get their houses and their accommodation and their schooling fees provided. But uh, most of the time they're here to, to give back to the world. Some of them, you can hear that their accent is foreign and they're from perhaps Portugal or from any European destination. And um, they, they work here usually for a year, but some actually enjoy it so much they stay longer. Maybe one day we could do a walk through the forest. You could show me some cool foods. Bush kai kai. Oh, bush kai kai. Yeah. Bush kai kai. It's bish lama for food. Kai kai. What about surf surf? Yes. Oh, you want to go to surf? You want to go surfing? We're going to go surfing this afternoon. Do you guys want to come down to the beach with us? You come to surf? You come to swim salt water? Yes. James, you ask him. You want them to swim the salt water? You want them to swim the salt water? For the marangi? For the marangi? Okay, for the nice new one. Okay, we go low surf in one hour. One hour time. You come to the house, okay? Okay, good, good. This is one of my favorite afternoon rituals, and that's to go for a surf and get in the salt water. You know, Rangi loves doing this after school, and I used to love doing it after school as well. It's just a fantastic way to sort of wash off all the energies of the day. Also, there's alkaline minerals in there which can help to relax your body. And it's a practice of mindfulness in many ways as well. You have to be mindful of the waves, of the wind, of the swell. If that was a dugong or a shark or a dolphin that you just saw. And it just takes you completely into the moment. And uh, is a great way, a great healthy ritual, I think. So let's go, let's go get in the water. Here comes the crew. <laughs> 